Hello everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. I have a Machine Robo Mugenbein review for you today. Uh, this is from the Candy Toy Mugen Saga line, and this is Mugen Pharaoh. Basically how it works, you get, um, there are five candy toys, and you can see this is number one. And here on the side you can see one, two, three, four, five, and I'll look at them each individually. But the reason the box is kind of coming apart here is because with uh, Mugen Buying Candy Toys, you have to open them up because the directions are actually on the inside. So you can see this is number one, Mugen Anubis. And it just kind of tells you how to put them all together, how to apply the stickers and everything. Um, so I do have all five of the boxes still, but they're all open like that because they're the directions. So trying to set up all five of the boxes here really wouldn't have worked. But I wanted to at least show you the packaging so you can see what they look like. And this is just a standard uh, little candy toy box, uh, just for a size comparison. Here's a crash combiner, about the same size. So you do have to uh, collect all five if you want to form Mugen Pharaoh, which is pictured here on the front. Um, also pictured here on the back. And he does look really cool. We'll get to that. He looks great. And there's a couple different things you can do as far as the accessories go. Not really much going on that side, as we've already seen. Not really much going on, on the top or the bottom. And then, like I said, you open them up and that has the instructions. So that's pretty much it for the packaging. Um, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll show you each of the five individually. And then we'll get to the combination, which is a little involved. And you basically just take everything apart, but we'll get there. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at number one, Mugen Anubis. All right, so here is Mugen Anubis, and it's pretty cool. He comes almost completely assembled in the box. This is a little staff piece that he has here, which comes separately, and I believe the hands, these pieces, uh, come in like a little grid that you just snap them out of, like a model kit. Um, so you, you bust those out, and you just pop them in these two spots here and here, and then this, the like Anubis crown, comes separately. And then you can, we'll get a quick look at the face sculpt here. If I can punch in nice and close. It's actually pretty nice. And that's all paint. The silver and the green there are all paint. Now they these do come with some stickers. I elected not to put the stickers on. Because to me, they seem like the kind of stickers that won't really stay on. Um... Usually when you have a textured surface that it wants you to put stickers on, I feel like they don't grip very well. And that's essentially what all these toys are. The detail is on the sticker, but if you don't put the sticker on, that detail is all molded into the plastic. So they would be great to paint because all the detail is there, but to try to put a flat sticker on something with texture... I just feel like it would not stick very well. And the other thing is, especially like this crown section here has some stickers. I feel like the sticker is too big. So like it doesn't affix properly. So I just didn't bother. Uh, like I said, there's a decent amount of detail and paint throughout this set that I don't feel it needs it. I mean, sure, it would look better. But I think if you really were ambitious, I think you'd be better off just painting it yourself than using this and use the stickers as a guideline for that. Instead of trying to put the stickers on. Obviously putting the stickers on would be easier. But I think in the long run they're going to peel off very easily. And then you can see that the staff has several peg points. And there's uh, two peg holes on the inside of the hands. You can really put it in either one. And there you go. So for so Mugen Anubis obviously he is the only humanoid looking uh, separate set. Obviously the combined form of Mugen Pharaoh is humanoid in nature. But he is the only one of the individual sets and he's got pretty decent articulation the head can go from side to side and back and forth uh, you have shoulder articulation here in and out you can move these because these are separate pieces that are just spinning in the peg hole um, you have a joint here in the waist and also of course you can go front to back you have a knee joint and then you also have this because again it's just the peg spinning in the peg hole but, I mean, it's a great amount of articulation for a figure this small, I really do have to say. And I think he looks absolutely fantastic. Even without his stickers, I still feel he looks really good. And I love this helmet on the top. I think they did a really great job with that. So, yeah, like I said, uh, pretty much fully assembled in the packaging. I think you just have to add the helmet and the staff and the hands. But, yeah, otherwise that is Mugen Anubis. 
I definitely like them a lot. All right, next up, uh, number two is Mugen Sphinx. And I think this is definitely the least impressive out of the five sets. Uh, but Mugen Sphinx definitely comes with a lot of important pieces for the combined build. For whatever reason, uh, he comes with this little figure, which really reminds me of the build series, like Powerful Tyranno, because they have these same kind of little figures with the big holes in the bottom, and they only have the one bit of articulation here in the midsection. I mean, there's a lot of nice detail there. And uh, Sphinx does have the ability, if you remove the head, that this little section can lift up and the figure can actually fit inside. So if you want to pretend that the figure is piloting the Sphinx, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Uh, the directions kind of just have you peg them here on the back. And, well, that was actually the easiest. Sometimes he gets really stuck in there. It can be a pain to get him out. But yeah, the directions officially just have you peg this person or figure in the back. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the face. This is a separate piece. This can come off. But you can see that there's some Cobra detailing there. And then, of course, you have the eyes of the Sphinx. And then this piece down here is for the combined mode. So, this, so again, there's nice paint there. Really looks nice. Uh, peg this. Just this peg drops into this big peg hole right here on the top. Uh, but yeah, so Mugen Sphinx on its own doesn't do a whole lot. It has these weird chain pieces too, which just kind of rattle around in the way. And they're just a couple links of, of this chain piece that you just kind of uh, snap together. But you can take these off and they just kind of peg in there very easily. Otherwise you have these back feet pieces, front feet pieces. This is, I think is going to be a connector for the back in Mugen Pharaoh. But yeah, so like I said, I think Finks is probably the weakest individual form out of the five. But it looks like the Sphinx, I can't deny it that. You know, I think it accomplishes what it needs to. But yeah, it's it's alright. So this is uh, the third one in the set, Mugen Ra. And obviously it's a kind of bird or hawk or condor, whatever you'd like to say it is. And I didn't really go into articulation that much with Mugen Sphinx. Because it doesn't have any like articulation points. But obviously anywhere where, you know, the peg is just pegged into a peg hole... You can move it around there. So, I mean, that kind of goes without saying, I think, as far as articulation points. So, you could move the wings. You could move these feet. Because it's just a, a peg rotating in a peg hole. Um, for the front of the hawk, I did try to affix these two stickers. These two red eyes are not paint. They are stickers. I felt like that was something I could probably do fairly easily. Because that's a fairly smooth surface. And they've stayed on fairly well, but not fantastically. This gold up here is paint which is nice. Um, yeah, there's not really too much else to go over. This, there was a sticker for this, but again, there's so much texture here, I, I don't see how it would have stayed on. Uh, this is like a tail feather. You have these pieces here, which are kind of like the talons, which looks really good in my opinion. And then you have the wings. If you wanted to turn the wings the opposite way, obviously you certainly can. I think they're, they're intended to go forward. I think they look better that way. And then you have the head of the condor or, or eagle, whatever it technically is. But again, not really so much in the way of moving articulation like uh, Mugen Anubis had, but you could move any of the pieces where it's just rotating the peg on the, you know, with the talons or anything like that. But overall, I like the look of it. I like the design. I think the eagle works very well. Or condor, I think whatever technically. I'm going to say condor. That's what I'm going to stick with. But it looks good. I think the bird is a good design. So fourth in the wave, we have Mugen Scorpion. I think this is a pretty good design. You have a lot of nice articulation points here. This can move uh, here. This can move as well. This can move here. And then you have the nice stinger piece. Um, the arms, again, it's just a peg on the peg hole, so it's just rotating there. Same for these claws. And then you have the kind of face of the scorpion here. Uh, there were some stickers for these parts here, but again, they were a little too big. And I feel like no matter what you do, I'm going to see this giant peg hole here as the eye of the scorpion. I just, my my eyes can't get, be drawn away from it. That's just always what it's going to see. But it's a pretty decent little scorpion. 
Like I said, a lot of nice articulation for the tail. I think that's really fun. Uh, the pincer claws, you know, they're not the best, but they work. And it does look like a scorpion, so I feel like they got that right. And I think they did a good job there. Um, yeah, not a whole lot more to say for this guy. He's obviously a lot of blue. His primary color scheme. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good as far as looking like a scorpion and the tail articulation, which I feel is the, the most important part. Uh, most important part of a scorpion is the tail. Claws, you know, very close second, but I think the tail is more important. I think they get, did a good job with it. I like the articulation. I like the design. Overall, he's just a fun little scorpion dude. And last but certainly not least is one of my favorites. Uh, the name has it as Mugen Sebeku, which I'm not 100% sure. Usually if it was like the Japanese word for alligator, it would not be written in katakana. So I'm not sure. But obviously he's an alligator, crocodile, whatever you want to say. Um, but he looks fantastic. Again, the red eyes are stickers. I chanced putting them on just because I really felt that it needed it and it really made the uh, alligator mode here pop. Obviously you can open up the mouth. It's kind of a weird, it's weird the way that it connects because like these two pieces peg into each other right there. So it's kind of hard getting them around each other, but they can open and close. There we go, if you push it together. And you can see I'll get in close. There's even teeth molded inside. You can see right there. So that's a really nice touch. They did a great job with this one. Um, again, you could move the legs if you want to because it's just a peg. Uh, this big sword piece here is his tail. But overall, I think they did a great job. You have these two kind of like skirt pieces for the, the pharaoh sandwiched together. And then you have the legs and then the face of the, of the gator. It looks great. I love this guy. The color scheme looks great. The little alligator mode is a lot of fun. The mouth opens and closes. I think they did a great job with this. Again, not a whole lot of articulation points, just spinning on peg holes. But the mouth opens and closes, which I think is the most important thing for an alligator toy. I don't really think you need a whole lot more arms and leg articulation. Um, opening, opening and closing mouth is by far the most important part, and it does that very, very well. So I like this guy a lot. Definitely one of my favorites of the five. So now that we have all five, we're going to get into the combination for Mugen Pharaoh. It's very intricate, and you basically just have to completely take apart all five of these into their, you know, individual bits and pieces because that's just how Mugen Bind works. The nice thing is that each one of them comes with one of these instruction sets. And they're very easy to follow, I have to say. They break up each of the five sets into their components, and they give them all a label. That way, when they're putting them together later on, they can say, like, hey, this is from set five, part F. And then you can just kind of go to the legend here and find it. So, um, you know, if you have this set, but for some reason don't have the instructions, I'm going to hold on this on each side just for a second. So that way you can pause here and really take a good look. If you need to consult this because it's definitely a very valuable resource you could try to figure it out without this and I, I guess I'll, I'll do that just to see if I can do it from memory but I'm sure I'll be referring to this over and over again um, so there you go so I'm gonna put that off to the side and keep that handy and then I'm really just gonna really start taking these apart uh, and I'll try to keep the pieces somewhat together because it's a little bit easier that way. But you really just have to completely disassemble these. And that's just kind of like with a normal Mugen Bind toy, you have the same situation. You don't really need this piece at all. So you can completely put that little figure off to the side. Um, with a normal Mugen Bind toy, it's kind of the same deal where you'll take the thing apart and then you'll reconfigure how it connects to a robot or a, a torso depending on you know if it's the normal Mugenbine uh, Mugenroid line or if it's like a build series or anything like that but with the candy toys you really have to completely deconstruct each piece and then you use each of all the individual pieces to film this giant robot and like I'm even going to take the gator head apart because these pieces will connect separately so, and the other thing is, if 
some pieces are not 100% crucial, but if you lose a piece, it can be kind of a disaster. And these fit together really snugly. There we go. And you can see there's fists being hidden inside the gator because he has the fists for the large robot inside. So completely take that apart. And then you come to the scorpion here. And you're going to want to take these light gray pieces off as well. And these back leg pieces from the scorpion. And you may start to notice as you take some of this stuff apart um, that some of the pieces from one set that were used in one way are now different. Like for example, this right here, which was the body of the scorpion, is the same torso from Mugen Anubis. And it's something you might not really notice because it comes with all the other pieces affixed to it. But once you start to take everything apart, you start to realize, oh, hey, you know, these, this guy has this and this has this and they're all very similar. And then that's going to be because you use both of those pieces for something similar as far as, you know, the, I think these actually become shin pieces for Pharaoh. So, let's see what I can remember off the top of my head. These two pieces from the gator become shoulder pads. And these two pieces from the scorpion's tail become the forearms and elbow joints. So you can take the fists from gator and pop them in. Then you can take these pieces, which were the shoulders, and I apologize because I'm not really in focus here. There we go. These were the shoulder joints from Mugen Anubis, and these are the big shoulder pads from the gator. And you can see the, the clip, and there's actually, and it's going to be hard to see because they're black, but this will clip right on to there. And then you can go ahead and peg this in. And I think that's most of the way for the arms. Take one of these chain pieces and peg it into the side here. So it looks like he has chains. I guess like he escaped captivity. And I believe that... Oh, I'm sorry. The last thing is you take... You know what? I did this wrong. The chain goes on the back of the forearm. Nope, I'm doing it wrong. Then I have this fist plugged in incorrectly. Oh, you know why? Because they don't... And I apologize, my lights are really going crazy here. You have to turn it like this. So that the elbow joint... Now you can always change later on. But this actually... So I did have it plugged into the right spot. But it should be on the back. And then you're going to take this wing... And plug that on the side. So there's one of your arms. Now again, if you want to leave it, you know, you can you can give it this elbow and then you can just rotate the fist. But then you can see you kind of have all this stuff in the way. So it goes back like this and then rotate the fist correctly. And that should be your arm. I'm going to try to fix my camera a little bit because my lighting is a little weird. Okay, so I shifted some stuff around. So here is my one arm, and I went ahead and I built the second arm. So now we have both of the arms done, and they are ready to go. So I'm going to put those off to the side. The next thing we're going to build is the torso section. Or, I'm sorry, the kind of hips section. So you're going to take this piece from the condor, make sure the peg is sticking out to the front, and you're going to take these two... Uh, kind of thigh sections from Mugen Anubis and you put them on and you can tell because they had the big uh, articulation points for the hips and the knee and then we're going to take the head and this is the thing that I always thought was a little weird you're going to take this black piece that was part of the gator's body and it wants you to take this peg and peg it into the condor just like that, and then hook this onto the butt. And it's always a weird choice to me because it really just gets in the way and it just like flops there on the butt. And maybe it's just part storage, I'm not really sure. 
Um, I mean, you could always take it off and just put it off to the side if you want to, but I feel like it kind of gets in the way of the legs. But that's what it has us do. So that's kind of your waist hip section. Put that off to the side for the moment. Uh, next, we're going to build some feet. So you're going to start with these large pieces, which were the back leg or the back foot, however you want to look at it, from Mook and Sphinx. And then you're going to take this piece. Nope, not that one. This piece, which was the front right leg of the alligator, and you're going to peg that into this peg hole here. Nope, I did this wrong. That This is going to peg here, like that. And then you're going to take the front leg of the Sphinx, the longer one, and you're going to peg that into this peg hole that I noted earlier. And then you're going to take the uh, part of the stinger, from the scorpion and you're going to peg that into here in the front and that's kind of cool because that gives the foot this kind of cool like blade on the front and so this is like a big foot that you built here <laughs> it's kind of strange but it does have this nice joint piece which is going to rock back and forth to give you a little bit of ankle tilt so put that foot off to the side and we're just going to build the other one so very quickly you can just kind of peg this all into each other exactly the same way. You're just using mirrored pieces to build the other foot. So now you have these two feet that look very similar and we're gonna put those off to the side. How the directions work is it's a lot of like build this little component and then at the end fit all the components together. So the next thing we're going to work on is the kind of shin, the knees down to the ankle sections basically. Uh, you're going to take the two hands from Mugen Anubis and you're going to, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly, you're going to turn these around to the back. You're going to peg these in here on what would have been the waist connections. And you're going to want to use the middle peg right here where my thumb is. And you can almost kind of see how that cutout like kind of fits. See how it kind of goes up in there and goes down. So that's how it's meant to look. And then you're going to take the uh, claw piece from the scorpion and that's going to go here as kind of a knee guard and that clips on right there and then you're going to take the foot from Mugen Anubis turn it upside down and attach it back here and again I really feel like this is just part storage it doesn't really serve a great purpose for being on the back of his leg it just it has to go somewhere so you're going to literally completely duplicate that here is the other piece from the scorpion. Peg in the shin guard again. You're going to take what were the two parts of the claws, which you'll notice are the exact same as the hands from Mugen Anubis. And you're going to peg these on exactly the same way you did with the last one. And then take the foot, store that on the back. So now you have these two identical, like, uh, thigh I guess really the shin sections that's what they are because these would be the kneecaps down to the ankle so put your shin sections off to the side so as you can see we have about half the pieces left <laughs> I'm going to kind of bring these in so you can see what we have left from each of these turning the directions over we're going to do the head section you take this you take that piece that I showed you earlier oops or you could drop it like I did you're going to rotate this, the face of the Sphinx all the way back so that that piece sticks out the back. And then you can see down in here, there is a peg hole right there, as you can see. And then this piece on the back of the helmet is going to peg in there. And that kind of gives you this added look. I really like the look of the helmet. It's so simple, bulks up the helmet, makes it look great. And I don't think it looks like weird at all. You're going to take these two pieces from the condor and you're going to peg them into the sides and that just kind of gives them like a, not really hair, but it's kind of a like flowing look, which you'll see when we get to the torso section. 
So I'm going to put that off to the side. Speaking of the torso section, here is the torso section, which is from the Sphinx. You're going to take this piece here from the condor and peg it onto the chest, just like that. And then you're going to take these two leg pieces from the scorpion and peg them on to the sides here and here because they have two pegs. So there's really only one way they can connect. And there you go. There's your torso section. Put that off to the side. Uh, next, they have these weird kind of... So you take the talons from the condor and you're going to take these feet from the crocodile or alligator however you'd like to look at it and you're going to just peg these in on the back peg back here again in my mind this is really just part storage they had to figure out something to do with these so you kind of do that for each side simply like that then you're going to take this piece from the sphinx Point it down like that. You're going to take these two pieces from the uh, face of the scorpion and you're going to peg this in here like that. And you're going to peg this in here like this. And then you're going to put one of these on each side like this. So you have this weird kind of backpack thing I'm not really sure actually do I have this pegged in wrong mm, yes I do I apologize this actually pegs into this here I thought it looked too wide so there you go it's a little bit better it's a little bit more stable as far as width and everything goes so that's kind of your backpack so now I believe we're finally ready to start putting some stuff together so we're gonna take our hip section we're gonna take our two um, shins here and peg them in then we're gonna take our feet and we're gonna peg them onto the bottom of the shin sections So again, because of how you store these feet on the back, this thing really just gets in the way, in my opinion. It just kind of sits there, and it's awkward, and I don't really get why it's there. And I feel like that's like the only bad design choice of the whole set, in my opinion. But you can kind of make your torso, or your lower half of your body. At this point, you can take this, and that will peg onto the front as the front skirt. And again, you're probably going to have to spread the legs out a little bit to really get this to peg in. Oh, you know what? I'm wrong. It pegs into the second one. I do that every single time. So there we go. And then it's all just about finding a pose you like. You're going to take the two gator head pieces, and they're going to peg on his side skirts. So again, I really hate this piece on the back. I'm going to take it off for a minute. Um, I'm going to spread out the legs to find a pose that I like. And position this front skirt. So I feel like that looks pretty good. That's a pretty good looking lower half of the body. Um, personally, what I like to do, I take this piece off. And again, the official directions have you put it right there. But I take it off and then I put this back on. It just works better. It has a lot more clearance now. It doesn't get in the way of the legs, which just causes a problem. And I jam it somewhere else in a little bit, which I'll show you. So here's your lower half. Put that off to the side. Now you can start connecting the torso. Take this. Take your two arms. They're going to peg in right here. You can see there's a very obvious peg spot right there. Then you're going to take the headpiece, and that drops in, and you're going to want to lift these up pretty much horizontal. And then you can drop the head on, and then you can kind of bring them back down. 
and they kind of rest. Now you're going to come here, let me shift this up, and then that drops right on there. And you can see Mugen Pharaoh is really coming together. He's pretty much done. You can come to the back here. And this has whoops, two obvious spots right there that for this to peg into. And that makes them a little back heavy, but in my opinion, I think it's for weight stability because the legs can kind of make them pitch forward a little bit. Now, what I like to do, you can see there's a peg back here. I take this and I just jam it back here. It doesn't look the best, but it kind of just gets it out of the way. And for me, it works a lot better than trying to make it as part of that back skirt. Because I just, I don't get that at all. In my opinion, it just doesn't work. Uh, the only thing left to do is build the staff. You're going to take this. This little crown piece from Sphinx goes here. Just like that. Then you're going to take this. And that's going to plug in, what am I doing wrong? Aha, there's this piece here. And let me just double check. That goes like this. And then this pegs in underneath of that. Doesn't it? What am I doing wrong? Why isn't this going in? There we go. And then this just pegs in on the bottom. And that makes the large staff. And then this you can peg in however you'd like. If you want to peg it into the front of the fist, you can. If you want to peg it in, uh, you could turn the fist around and peg it into the side. It's really just up to you. But that is pretty much Mugen Pharaoh. And I'll try to get a little bit closer. I like the look of them a lot. Like I said, you can turn the arms so that the elbow, but then you'll just have the... I mean, if you really want it, I guess, you could take this off and peg it into the side. If you'd like that look a little better. And you can move the chains around. I mean, that's the great thing about Mugenbine. All the connectors are the same, so you can just make whatever you want. If you don't like a piece somewhere, you can move it around. You can come up with something different. You can change the configuration any way you wish. So he is a little back heavy, and really it's just because I'm not finding a great pose for the feet, and that's on me. But I'm trying to balance, uh, you know, the skirt piece, and it does seem like the skirt piece, I don't know. It's a little weird. Oops, and the this just fell off completely. Push that back in. So yeah, I promise he's not really this difficult to pose. It's just me. I'm terrible at posing figures. But I really like the head sculpt. I mean, it's mostly just, you know, Mugen Anubis' head with this extra piece on the side. But it looks great. The blue paint there, I'm really glad they didn't skimp on that and they didn't use stickers, but they did actually paint it. I appreciate that a lot. If we pan down to the feet section... You can see you do have that in and out movement here in the foot. And then you, of course, have the same hip articulation I showed you earlier on Mugen Anubis. You just have this skirt piece that's a little weird. I guess you could just pull the peg out a little bit just to make it lay a little flatter. And then you have this weird one in the back. It's just, I don't know, this one just kind of is so floppy. This whole section on the back is just like my least favorite part of this whole set. Otherwise, it's a great set. He looks great. I really love the color scheme. I love how everything fits together. I think the chains are a nice touch. And if you want, you can take them off and incorporate them into different parts of the weapon. It kind of shows you how to do that on the packaging. It, again, it's really just whatever you want to do. That's the beauty of the Mugenbein line. I mean, Mugenbein literally means infinite combinations. And it's very true. You can just do whatever you like. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer here. So I really do like that head sculpt a lot. And yes, there are a lot of stickers that could enhance the way this looks, but I feel like they didn't skimp on the paint. All the parts that really need the paint have it. 
you have the kneecaps here you have the chest plate you have the head everything on the head is all paint that came exactly like that so I feel like I didn't really need the stickers when I looked at it there we go he does work with a little bit wider stance but yeah I like him a lot I really really do I think it's a great set now this is a bit older set now obviously this originally came out years and years ago I want to say like the mid to late 2000s was when Mugenbein really came out like I think 2000 uh, I want to say like the early 2000s 2002 2003 was kind of when Machine Robo Rescue ended and Mugenbein kind of launched but the candy toy sets came way after all the normal Mugenbein releases came out and then they started doing the candy toy as a way to keep it alive and those ended I want to say late 2000s maybe 2009 2010 but this is actually a re-release of this set that came out a year or two ago and they're still doing it which is really fun they're still re-releasing some sets I think they did the King Arthur set not that long ago and uh, a set just came out that I, I'm blanking on the name of it. And there's another set in September. So I think it's really cool that Mugenbein's kind of coming back. And the fact that they're re-releasing these candy toy sets. I'm hoping as a way to like test the water. Test the waters as they say. And then maybe they would just release a brand new set. Either candy toy or the normal line. Or maybe reissue some of the normal line. I'd love... For them to reissue some of the original toys from the early 2000s because there were a couple that I didn't get and I'd like to fill in those gaps and yeah I don't know it's just a to it's a toy line I stumbled on by accident when I was in Japan and I just fell in love with it immediately and I've loved it ever since so I think Mugenbein is a lot of fun I think this set is a lot of fun if you can track it down I found it on Mandarake like I said since it's a reissue and it's the reissue itself is not that old um it's not terrible to find. I think for all five and shipping, I paid $35, if I remember correctly, which is not terrible. I think the set itself before shipping was 25 so then maybe I paid 40 I paid somewhere in between 35 and 40 with shipping. And that was for quicker shipping from Mandarake, so really not a big deal. But I think the set was around... $25 which really isn't that big a deal it's about five dollars a box because you're getting five boxes in the set so I think that's pretty reasonable um, so that would be where I would look if you're looking for this I would check Mandarake because they show up on there fairly regularly so if you really wanted one probably not terrible to find one there but definitely it's one of those toys that you're going to want the directions because you might be able to figure out the five individual ones without the directions but the directions definitely help for the combined form but if you don't have the directions hopefully the ones i showed earlier in this uh review were able to help you so i highly recommend these i recommend pretty much anything mugenbein there isn't a bad mugenboy mugenboy there isn't a bad mugenbein toy which is what i was trying to say there isn't a bad mugenbein toy out there some are better than others yes but they're all fun i've never met one that i've hated so let me know what you guys think in the comments below Please like and share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Mugen Pharaoh from the Mugen Saga candy toy line of Machine Robo Mugenbein. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching.